Hi, my name is uh, David Shahady. I am the director of the Air Force uh, SBIR SDTR program. So it is a, uh, a great pleasure to uh, talk to you all today. Uh, we had a lot of uh, exciting stuff planned uh, for Austin, but uh, you know, as you can see, uh, the show goes on. I think the, the best uh, thing that I want to share with you is a little of the history of the program, a uh, little bit of what we're doing right now, and then talk about what we see as far as the future. And uh, there are just so many exciting things going on in this, in this swim lane of innovation right now for the Air Force. I think the, probably the best thing to talk and, and start off is the difference between inventors and innovators. And the best example I use you know, very, very often is that the, the light bulb was actually invented uh, by Joseph Swan in England far before um, Thomas Edison did. But what Thomas Edison was able to do is was able to take that for the Edison Lighting uh, Company, was able to put that light bulb in every home in America. And that's what the difference between innovators and inventors truly are. That inventors make stuff, but innovators make history. And that's what we're really looking for on the Air Force side, is folks that are going to come help us on the Air Force side to make history. And the program that we, we, we've been working under obviously has been around for a very, very long time and has a, a, a long tradition. It's a congressional program. Uh, meaning our congressional uh, leadership throughout the country saw some tremendous uh, value and opportunity in, in small business. And they created the, the SBIR program in order to try to help do several things. One was to grow the economy and build uh, the national economy uh, across all, uh, all of the United States. Uh, they also looked to is there a way to take small business technology and leverage that to help the warfighter? Uh, they wanted to see how they could uh, do things you know, quickly. Could we accelerate the speed of technology? Could we accelerate the speed that business could be done? And then could we actually expand the industrial base of, of companies that are available within uh, our nation in order to help, help build uh, military and, and government uh, uh, capabilities. And I think that is a, a tremendous framework to build off of. And so if you think back in the past, the, the program, uh, so I, I took over uh, as the first Air Force level uh, program manager or, or director uh, in 2016. And there was sort of an era before where we were doing really aggressive work and, and, and trying to work very, very hard uh, to get things accomplished. Uh, everything took Herculean effort. It was a very much a disconnected struggle. You know, companies were getting funding for things and there was the, you know, well, how am I going to get the next job? How am I going to get the next technology out? How am I going, who am I working with? Who are my customers? And everyone sort of was sitting on an island. You had industry on an island, academia. We had the government on an island. We had this mystical land of Oz out in the background that was, here's your market. Uh, we had commercial industry that was saying, how can we best leverage that? And, and it was, you know, it was a struggle. Uh, we succeeded, as we always do, but it was a struggle. And so the, the goal going forward, uh, the goal going forward that our senior leadership um, uh, like our secretary and, and like Dr. Roper and the other folks was, can we create a connected journey? Can we create an, a, 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 a process that takes all of these Herculean components, all these different people trying to support uh, innovation and, and small business, can we unite them into a connected journey? And that's, what we're, that's the journey that we've been on uh, for the last several years. It's been a very exciting journey. Uh, it, it's, we've had our ups and downs, and like any experiment, we've learned so many different things. There are things that we've done that have turned out to be wonderful. There are things that we had found out in unintended consequences, but just like any innovation journey, we're on a constant state of improvement. And so the idea of making some of these changes and people saying, well, is there a benefit? And, and we found that there is. In the last two years, we've created almost $5 billion of additional outside, you know, non, 
uh, non-SIBR investment for companies that are in this portfolio. And that is a, a monumental number in terms of the, the return that we've been able to create through many of these pilot experiments that we've been doing. Uh, the other side of this is uh, we started to consolidate all the kinds of people that were working with small business companies and we created a, a center of excellence or what I'd like to call a center for excellence, meaning that we're constantly in, a, in the, in the the uh, ability of, of, of making different changes and improvements. But we've been able to consolidate all those resources to do a bunch of different things. We're able to get contracts awarded to companies faster. It used to take you know, six to eight months to get someone on contract, and we're now getting them on contract and, and on, on contract with us in, in less than two months, sometimes even faster. Uh, we are using our pitch day concepts to try to give small businesses the opportunity to speak to their customers, speak to the warfighters and the users, speak to industry, speak to the venture partners, speak to academia, other people who are buyers of that technology. And by doing that, we've created the ability to say, okay, this Cyber money is a seed for you to find other funding in the future. Many people talked about the expression, you know, here you can either give someone a fish for a day or you can teach them to fish and they can eat for a lifetime. And that's really what we're trying to do with the Air Force Cyber Fund, is we're trying to use this money as a seed funding. This is the Air Force's venture fund that you know our ability to make investments in companies out there and to to share and to build partnerships with new companies and and this has paid huge dividends for us uh, the other side of the house is we've been able to get more and more warfighter organizations uh, acknowledging the value that small businesses can bring to the table and and in doing that they have seen the value that the small innovators out there can actually provide in terms of reaction and, and responsiveness and revolutionary ideas uh, for the warfighter. Those have all been wonderful results of our experiment. The, and a few things I just want to share with you as, as we go forward. And, and one of those is uh, the idea of the Air Force's investment isn't a, a one, one type of investment. We're looking for uh, opportunities across the entire spectrum of work that we accomplish for both the air and the space force. But more importantly, we're looking for things that are what we call the three R's, revolutionary things, those things that are disruptive technologies that will be breakthroughs, that are, you know, tip of the spear, uh, you know, tip of the, the edge of the, the, the technology curve, the, the ability to do things in a dramatic, improvement, disruptive way. And we want to make investments in those. We want to make investments in relevant technology. Those are things that are able to impact, you know, programs and important things that we have, weapon systems, whether it's our space systems, whether it's our air systems. We want to make technology investments in those. And then lastly, we want to do things that are quick reaction. There are always urgent problems that come up uh, in the war fighting in re realm, and we want to be able to have small business technologies that can respond to those. So just like any stock portfolio or investment portfolio, the Air Force has a blend of near-term, long-term, uh, and, and mid-term uh, rewards. We have high risk, moderate risk, and, 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 and less risk. There is not one avenue that we're pursuing. And so, yes, we want to look for things that have commercial opportunities. Yes, we want to look for things that have uh, war fighting opportunities. Yes, we want to look for things that have dual use technology. And, and we believe that, that companies need to see all of those different angles and avenues. Last year, we put out over 200 different topics, 200 different you know, ideas. Uh, that people had to farm through. And what we're trying to do is to consolidate those topics in such a way that, yes, we'll still have all of those ideas, all of those, those problems that are, that are documented, but having an open avenue that companies can come in and, and approach us. And the reason for doing that is that 
instead of making small businesses shop around to every single possible opportunity, we want to give small businesses that have an idea the best opportunity to showcase that idea to the most problems that we are seeing. And so that is, that is a concept that we employed with these open, open topics. Uh, they're actually open topics with subtopics. So it's, it's the idea of creating a, a welcoming and open door. And our AFWorks partner has been a tremendous front door. And, and to the extent that they're the front door of our Air Force. They're the innovation front door. And we want companies to see that and say, if I've got something that I think the Air Force can use, that's where I'm going to go. I'm going to go to this front door. I don't have to mystify through this road map of, of different organizations. I don't have to understand all the Air Force and government terminology. I can go to a front door and, and those, those entities will be available to me just going to that front door. I think the other thing uh, that I wanted to share with you is we're trying to get away from the idea of you know, small business. I know we won't ever change the term small business, but, but, but personally, I and, uh, and many of the other Air Force leaders think that doesn't do you all as small businesses service. That, that you're not small. You're actually very, very big in what your impact is to our nation. And so I like to use the term innovative partners. I like to use the term about innovation businesses, and that, that's kind of where we have gone with the idea of trying to build a, uh, a welcoming umbrella, which we've, we've built as Air Force Ventures. The idea that the Air Force is open for business, um, that we are looking to partner with you all, and we're building on that partnership. And, and these are the things that we have going on right now today. We have open topics, um, that are designed to bring in as many of you as possible. We have our established relationships with our programs of record, our, our weapon systems in the air and space. We have long-term partnerships with other small business companies that we've been working with. We want to continue those partnerships. We want to reach out to new businesses that have never worked with us before. We want to find uh, new diverse entities that we've never touched base with before, whether you are a, uh, what, you know, a small disadvantaged business, whether you're a new start, whether you're someone who's been doing work in the commercial world and wants to move into the government market, you're all part of this equation. There is not any one type of company that the Air Force is looking for right now. We're looking for people in every, and, and companies in every one of these uh, different genres. Uh, the other piece that I think is important is uh, the idea of uh, exposing you to our, our warfighters and our customers. And, and some of this is about taking your ideas and giving you the opportunity uh, to interface with our warfighter customers, to, to touch base with them, to understand their problems. We want to help to foster that. We also want to make this an efficient process. We know that the lifeblood of any company is that it's revenue stream. And while some organizations can you know, struggle and can uh, wait out a, a six months waiting for income to come in or promise to be, be kept, we want to make sure uh, that that's not the case for you. That when you have been awarded a contract and you've been awarded funding, uh, that, that there is a, a, a quick reaction to get you on contract, to get you off and working with us. Uh, we know that there is a lot of struggles that small business have and we don't want our income or our revenue stream to you to be one of them. Uh, the other things that are very, very important is we've created lots of different avenues, whether it's sparks or colliders, whether it's uh, tech warrior events, whether it's operational demonstrations, lots of different opportunities for you as, as companies to reach out and, and to, to interface with us. We want to continue to build on those things. We want to create an, a, 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 um, 
educational process, a, a way of saying, here's the kinds of things that you need to be thinking about when you're working with the government, when you're working with commercial industry, when you're working with other folks. He, here are all the different educational aspects. And, and part of that is our, our, our technical and business assistance. We want to help you uh, to build solid business plans for how you're going to do work in the future. The other parts of this are things like we want to make sure that the senior leadership of the Air Force understands the value that you play. And we do that by capturing success stories. We do that by telling your story to the community. We tell that story uh, to the government. We tell that story to Congress. We tell that story to other businesses. Again, a very, very important part of our program. We want to look at the the large prime contractors that we work with. Small business innovation research is only a fraction of the money that is spent within the federal government on small businesses or small innovative businesses. And we want to make sure that, that as many companies as possible are properly poised to be able to go after that. And we're doing that by reaching out to our prime contractors, to the larger business, to the first tier suppliers and the second tier suppliers all the people that are providing these and saying, hey, here is a catalog of Air Force programs that we have, we have expressed interest in, and they are great opportunities for you all, large prime contractors, to partner with these companies to help deliver technologies to us on the Air Force side. Again, a tremendous opportunity inside the program. The other side of this is in reaching out to academia. We want to see academic institutions that have lots of different ideas and how do we spin those out by, you know, how do we spin these academic ideas out? Whether it's by them partnering with a small business and saying this is the way we're going to get this out of the classroom and out of the laboratory and into the, the, into the market where it can be bought and, or sold. And uh, we want to see you know, students that are leaving these academic organizations saying, I'm going to go start a new contract. And, and that is uh, an important thing as well. I think those are all very, very valuable prepositions that, that we need to pursue in the future. We still maintain the same program across the DOD. We still have phase ones. We still have phase twos. Uh, and and the, the goal of all of this is to get these programs into a program where other funding other than CIBR is where that's coming from. We want to build that up to where we've taken you as we've been an in, in, innovative organization. We want to marry you with a, a problem and a need and we want to get a buyer that is interested in your technology. These are all propositions that we see um, you know, you know, going forward. The, the, the thing I want to kind of leave everyone with is we understand that this is a, is a change. And change is somewhat you know, challenging for folks. But the core of the program still remains the same. The fundamental value of the program is still the same. The idea of phase one concepts, phase two prototyping, and scaling and eventually scaling up to where it's being used. Those are still the same pr principles. We're looking at all kinds of different ways to open this aperture and to get as many companies as possible in. And, and in doing that, uh, we've, we've increased the number of, of, of phase one awards that we're, 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 we're doing each year. We've increased the number of phase two awards, with all with the purpose of getting you as customers, you as product, mapped up with the buyers, mapped up with the buyers of the Air Force. And, and we have made so many strong successes, and we feel very, very confident that we're going to be able to continue to do this going forward. These are all tremendous propositions, um, and, and we are excited to be on this challenging journey with, with you all. Um, I want to kind of close with you know, the importance that you all provide uh, for us. Uh, the Air Force was based on two guys in a bicycle shop in Dayton, Ohio, uh, that, that started everything with the development of an aircraft. We've expanded. The entire Air Force is, is based on those. We are founded on a small business, and we need your uh, support and your involvement in our programs in order to continue to succeed. 
Secretary and, and Dr. Roper, they expressed the, the large vision that the Air Force and Space Force has going forward. And, and small business, innovative businesses like yours are essential to our being able to accomplish that goal. The Air Force is open for business and we are truly dedicated to making your technologies part of our portfolio and mapping you against those problems that you can make the best and largest contributions for. Very, very excited to be here and I'm, I'm really happy to, to, to see the progress that we're making both in, in investments and in benefit to you, both in economic growth and in value to the, to the warfighter. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy to, to interface with you all on a regular basis. And, and again, it's, a, it's an indeed a pleasure to talk to you today. I know there's probably lots of questions out there, and I'm, I'm happy to answer as many of them I, I, as I can and to, to give you as, as clear of, a, of an understanding as I possibly can. So if there's any questions out there, um, I'm, I'm open and, and happy and willing to answer those. So the first question is from Asana. And he they said, I don't join from Lackland is AppWork Cyber non diluted money for small businesses whose IP will be uh, if anything comes out of the Cyber money. Also, does having a CRABA with AppWorks customers mandatory in phase two? So uh, there, there are a lot of so there, there are a lot of questions in there. So so I'll, I'll try to address a couple of them. So so one. Uh, intellectual property is a really, really important thing of this program. The, the value that small businesses, uh, it's, it's in your intellectual property. And we are committed and dedicated to protecting that intellectual property. And so uh, there are numbers of, of different uh, protections that we've put in place uh, to support intellectual property. One of those is when you are uh, given or when you are awarded a SIBR, uh, you maintain all the rights to your intellectual property, meaning we on the government, you know, we do not own that. It also gives you the opportunity to sell that technology to other people, whether it is, uh, you know, other, you can sell that technology to, to other, uh, other DOD, uh, Army and Navy, you can sell that to NASA, you can sell that to the National Institute of Health, all of those. Um, in terms of uh, what kinds of agreements, uh, I think, uh, unfortunately, the perspective on, on someone, what's required and what's not, ha has been somewhat misconstrued. The, the intention of asking organizations uh, to, to write up what we call memorandums of agreement or to have uh, CRADAs or agreements in place is not about the agreement itself. It's really about saying that, hey, here is somebody who is interested. It's a way for us to gauge the interest that other, uh, other government entities or other Air Force entities have in uh, your technology. And, and there are three things that we, we measure cyber technologies on. We measure on the technical merit, we measure on the commercialization potential, and we measure on the, the, uh, the, the team that you've built up. Those are the three things that we're, we're measuring on. And so the commercialization potential, what, what's the possibility of this being put into a weapon system? What is the possibility of this being sold on the outside market? What is the dual use opportunity? What is the opportunity inside the Air Force or other government markets? That measure of that is, is done by seeing a, a number of factors. And one of them is who else, who's willing to sign up? Who is else is interested in that? Whether uh, you know, it's a government individual or whether it's an outside individual. So a CRADA isn't necessarily a requirement. We don't require those kind of things. And, 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 and going forward, we're not going to be requiring those. But what we are going to be doing is we're going to be asking organizations to, to bring to us some kind of a, uh, something that demonstrates that someone outside, someone other than CIBR, is interested in putting money on this. And that is going to be a large measure of whether or not there is potential for this to be used going forward. Great, thanks for that. Second question, uh, there's been a combination of these uh, questions asked. Uh, Scott Gray said that open topics rock, otherwise they wouldn't have won. Um, is there a limit of one award at a time? And will this still be the case going forward? Scott says that um, he's part of a small business that has three great innovative ideas that can handle three phase ones right now. <laughs> yeah. 
So, you know, one of the things is, you know, we, we always are learning lessons. And I'll, I'll be truthful, uh, you know, we, they, we're, we're equally excited about the open topics because they, they do the best of both worlds. The idea of here's where you can go if you've got an idea and you're not sure where it fits. Um, and, and it's also a place that we can advertise all the things that people are looking for. So it is the best of both worlds. Unfortunately, the terminology, things get lost in the, the mix, but the idea was to support businesses out there. Uh, we were also trying to expand and get as many new players in as possible. Um, and in doing that, you know, we, we placed initially, we put out a restriction on there for one, one topic or one proposal per, or one award. Uh, we've backed off of that. We understood uh, it was an unintended consequence. Uh, we understand that there are companies that can foster more than one, um, and and we are you know, certainly uh, we, we certainly recognize that in our in some of our recent uh, solicitations, and, and we've taken that requirement um, out of those solicitations, and and we don't anticipate that being a requirement going forward. If you, yes, if you got three ideas, send the three ideas in. If you've got three good ideas, and we can get three matches, then. And sure enough, that then we, we, we will press forward. But you know, value uh, industry and value you all as uh, as organizations giving us that feedback so we can make the course correction. Three sounds good. Next question from Richard Tong. Is there a plan to bring back some traditional topics back to the AppWorks Fiber program? So I, here's my point: is the traditional topics never actually left. And so we, we've been doing traditional topics. What, what I think we're going to see going forward is we're going to have our open topic. We're going to have our, our, our open topic, but we're going to have what we call focus areas or subtopics inside of that. And the traditional topics will obviously, or traditional concept of a specific problem or a specific need, they'll be nested inside those open topics. And so you'll get the best of both worlds. You'll have the, the specificity of a problem that, a, uh, that one of our uh, weapon systems or one of our science and technology environments or one of those have brought to the table and says, here's something I'm specifically looking for. Uh, you'll have the ability to put something in against that. You'll also have the ability, of, if you don't know how that your, your technology fits, you don't have to try to pick and, and judge and shoehorn one in. So we feel that they'll be the best of both worlds. Uh, we're not making any commitment that there'll be only one topic or how, but, but we're going to use all of those tools at our disposal going forward. And, 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 and we think uh, the, the system or the process actually is, is in, in those organizations' favor. We, 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 the traditional topics, they're in there. They're, they're, they're in the sauce, and, and they're in the topics that we have right now. They're just now known as focus areas, and going forward, I think you'll see, uh, you'll be able to see and recognize that more. From Scott Gray, what is the relationship with Army and Navy, Navy and Cyber, if any? I ask because of the cross-platform solution uh, for all three. The important thing to recognize is, so in, in my capacity as the Air Force Director, I have a counterpart in the Army. I have a counterpart in the Navy. I have one in, in DITRA. Uh, I also have them in the other uh, departments of you know, NASA, Department of Energy. What we're trying to do is simply to make it so that the, the, the power of the CIBR program isn't the single service. If you have an idea that you've, you've, you've done work with the Air Force, uh, you know, we don't own you, and, and we would love to see you uh, ability to take that idea and shop that around to other, other services. By the same token, we make investments in what's being done for other services all the time. And so part of, you know, we, we've, we've working to build unity within the Air Force, but we're also working to build unity within the Department of Defense and unity across the entire government in Cyber. There is so much value in this program, but the value, the true value, is in the ability to, uh, to, to take our technologies and take the technologies of others and share them. Uh, duplication of some efforts and here and there is okay. It creates a market. But what we don't want to necessarily do is 
try to start all over from scratch every time something comes up. If there's a technology that can be modified to meet our needs or something, we want to try to, to, to do that and buy that. And, and so the idea of our relationship going forward is, you know, as we've been experimenting with these concepts, we're now starting to bring in our Army and our Navy and our NASA and, and other, other teammates to say, well, is there things that are you know, are there commercial solutions? Are there dual use technologies? Are there joint dual use technologies? And so I think going forward, you're gonna see more and more topics. You're gonna to see some open topics that are tied to the Army and the Air Force, some that are tied to joint, some, and you're going to start to see, are there topics where Air Force and Army could both make an investment in something with a particular company? So the, the short answer are, to your question is yes. We're building up that to where it's not going to be just you're working with the Air Force. You're going to be working with the entire cyber community by getting in, in, into, the, into the program and the portfolio. I like to express it like this. Once you've been awarded, the value of cyber is once you've been awarded a cyber, you're in the catalog. And any customer in the government can now shop through that catalog and is allowed to buy from you sole source. It does not mean that you have the entitlement that they must buy from you, but it does mean that you're in that catalog and we've made it very, very simple for those folks to buy from you. I, as the Air Force, I want to make sure that the, the buyers of the Air Force and the buyers of other departments know that they can shop off of that catalog, that they can look at the things that you're doing, that they can buy the product, the technology, the service, or they can take what's been done and modify it for their needs. We want to make that portfolio available to anyone within the government. This is from Larry Williams. He says, we were awarded a phase 119.3. However, it has been a struggle to connect with potential customers. We have a new technology that will have a strong impact on verticals, uh, will have a strong impact on vertical takeoff in landing slash urban air mobility under the new Agility Prime program. This is dual use technology as we have multiple customers and investors. However, we do not, we have not been able to connect with potential U.S. Air Force customers to showcase our technology. No front door for us. Since Agility Prime has the goal to fly by the end of 2020, cannot slip into another later cyber round in order to have the time we need to be on the platform by the end of the year. I've tried and tried to get someone to engage directly with me. If I have had no luck, what else can be done? So, uh, you know, that the idea of, uh, you know, I, I don't really know the specifics of that, of your company, Larry, but uh, this I will say, if, if uh, why don't you, you if you send uh, me a message, uh, I'm happy to, to try to uh, try to get a better understanding and to, to give you a connection or a point of contact that, that you can pursue. Um, like any technology, and we have we have 7,000 active cybers, uh, we need to, we, we recognize and understand that, that we're going to have to come up with uh, better, uh, better ways to, to match you up with folks. Um, I think the value is, it, you know, the fact that you do have a phase one cyber is just not a one, one option, uh, you know, that, that 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 is a alive and well, uh, whether someone has picked up and decided to fund you for a phase two or not, uh, you know that that your proposal is still open and still still open, um, and and we just probably need to try to to match you up. And if there's the right fit, um, th then that that investment will come. And so uh, I I understand the challenge, uh, but I don't understand the specifics. If you touch reach out to to, to our you know me personally, I'll connect you with some folks who can work with you. Great, um, and I'm sure, David, that you'll be sharing your contact info at the end. Um, I'll also get it from one yeah. of your contacts. So yeah, uh, our, our information is available. We, we have, uh, you know, the AFWorks website is one. Uh, we also, as, as, our, as, our front, as our front door, um, and, and then the other one is the Air Force program. Uh, the Air Force program also has a website. It, it's the Air Force SBIR, STTR website. Um, our information is on there as well. Next question from Bill McCormick. He says, I work at a small R&D business. It seems like the Air Force is trying to, trying to move away from traditional R&D type SIBRs and is moving towards dual use commercial products. The 20.1 SIBR release had very few, if any, traditional R&D topics and mainly focused on the AppWorks open topics for dual use. Do you know if 20.2 will go back to the more traditional SIBR topics or will it stay with the AppWorks open topics for dual use products? 
So, so uh, recognizing that you know that there were a, there was a push for commercial products and and those, the the, the whole goal of Cyber is to to do research that can then be put into technology. So whether it's dual use or, or whether it's Air Force only, uh, we expect there'll be a blend. Uh, you know, we had a, a number of topics that went out in 21. You know, there'll be, you know, be, there'll be again uh, more topics that go out in, in 22. But what I think you're going to see is that if you are, uh, if you are interested in doing you know, things in the different genres, a revolutionary near term, uh, or, or long term, mid term, far term, uh, we, we have a blend of those. Uh, and it won't be any one particular you know, genre. Yes, we've put some focus and tried to put effort into the commercial and dual use. Yes, we're going to have to put effort into, into you know, you know, research areas as well. And I think there, it, it's going to depend on the needs, what's the greatest needs of the Air Force. You know, doing research that the Air Force isn't going to be ready to, to buy, accept, and, and put in, that doesn't do the, your organization any, any good. And, and, and we as investors, that doesn't help us pursue. So the, the short answer again is yes, we, we are going to have a blend of near, mid, and, and far term things. And so what, what you saw in the, 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 the initial release is yes, it's, it's one swath of the things that we're going to be doing over the next you know, 12 months, next, uh, you know, 18, 24 months. Uh, we used to only do one solicitation a year. We're now doing two, three, sometimes four solicitations in a year. So there'll be always different things and it'll be driven by the needs and what the Air Force is actually trying to pull for and who, who's ready to buy. Great, all right, next question is from Jordan Matthews. Is the SPTR program following a similar path you mentioned academia working with uh, SB small businesses yeah, to get those ideas and technologies out. And that's what I thought the whole program was designated to do. Yes, the, so the STTR program, we kind of led the path with uh, SBIR uh, and, and the STTR is, is following suit. We have a number of different research topics that have gone out in the STTR realm. Uh, we have, you know, using the same open topics with, with the traditional topics kind of nested in there as, as focus areas. Uh, so if you're saying, hey, I'm looking for open, uh, you know, I'm looking for traditional topics, they're going to be nested inside the open topics. So as we put out an open topic, those will be in there. Yes, we have topics that are going out uh, that are, are designed for STTR programs as well. I, I think you have to look at it like this. If there is something specific that the Air Force is, is interested in, it'll be listed in those open topics as a focus area. If you don't see something in there as a focus area and you want to give us a proposal on that, you can put that into that topic. And you, that, that's where the power of our open topic program is, is that you, if you don't see a fit, but you know that there's something that is of value to us, you can still put it into that into that proposal and uh, proposal into that topic. And the STTR program is is very similar to that for us. Next one is from Doug Freetag. It remains unclear if you are abandoning the legacy funded projects that are trying to move through the system. Does AppWorks plan to adopt the definitions of investor ownership that NSF and NIH have adopted? So again, NIH uh, and, and NSF, they work under a little different framework. They work under the grant, the grant framework, whereas on the, on the DOD, we're, we are contracts. And, and part, of a, part of the grant is grants are designed to doing research for the purpose of you know, building up all mankind's knowledge, but contracts are about delivering something. And so uh, abandoning, I wouldn't call it abandoning the legacy projects. What we're trying to do, what I, I guess I would, I would argue is we're now trying to say rather than fund everything with Cyber, we are not in the position to be able to keep legacy programs going. In order for those programs to maintain and keep going, we need to match you up with someone else other than Cyber that is going to continue to invest in your program and to bring it into the fold, to take the, the de deliverable, the products, the service, the research, and someone else is willing to invest in you. And, and we are going to do whatever we can to, to take the legacy systems that are out there, or the legacy technologies that have been developed under Cyber. We want to see you uh, in the hands of a buyer, you know, whether that's somebody buying research, whether that's somebody buying a product, 
uh, we are buying service. We want to provide, you know, we want to see that, that matchup that been made. So abandoning those is not the right word. The, the answer is we're, we're looking for who else, who's the, who's the end, who, who's the next person to pick up and, 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 and work with you. And, and, and we are trying to take our cyber investment and, and use that precious seed dollars uh, as the start not the sustainment of those programs through the whole life cycle. That's, that's not what the program was designed to do. This next question is from Sarah Carroll. Doesn't requiring those types, I think this refers to a previous question asked earlier, um, doesn't requiring the types of monetary commitments disproportionately put the smaller businesses with fewer big industry contacts at a disadvantage? So I, I, think what, I think what we're trying to do is we, we understood that and we're, we're backing away from the requirement. What we're really, really looking for is, uh, you know, the small businesses uh, that if, you're, if your goal as a small business is you want to, you know, use Cibber as the lifeblood of your business, then, then probably no, we're not going to be a good fit for you. Uh, but if you're interested in taking your technology and, and taking an investment from the Cyber program and using it to capitalize on whether it, it may be industry, it may be uh, you know, prime contractors, it may be other government organizations, it may be other Air Force organizations, if you're interested in that, then yes, we are a good fit. But if the, if the goal is that, that the Air Force Cyber program will continue to fund you you know, for, for numbers and numbers of years and for multiple, uh, you know, options. We are not a pure funding and sustainment organization. We are a seed funding investment organization. And, and that's where, the, that's, what, that's what our charter is. That's what our congressional charter says. And we'll continue to, to, to con go down that path. Um, but uh, looking for opportunities, um, we are not requiring, we're not going to be requiring you to bring in uh, commercial contacts, but it is a good measure of whether or not someone else is interested in buying from you. If the government, the commercial industry, or, or, or other government industry, those are all indicators of whether someone else is interested in putting funding on it because we don't have the ability to, to maintain funding throughout the entire life cycle of those programs. Here's a quick question from Susan Sprinkle. If we applied for 20.1, has everyone been notified? Um, so I, I think, uh, I, I'm not exactly sure. Um, I think uh, we've had a, a lot of notifications go out. Um, that, that's a question I'll have to ask our, our team. Um, if, they, uh, if you haven't been notified, then, then um, we certainly need to make sure that that gets the, the door closed and or, you know, get the, the door uh, you know, closed out with you and, and where, where you sit. Um, again, feel free to reach out to us on, on our website uh, and, and our info line or, or whatever, and then I'll, we'll try to get you an answer. All right, we got about five minutes left. Um, we probably won't get to all the questions. Uh, I have the ones that we didn't get to recorded, so I could send them your way, David. Yeah, the um, other thing is we, on our website, there is an info email line. Uh, if anybody that's out there wants to send their questions, if they didn't get answered to that, uh, I, we have a team that, that looks through those and, and, and we can get answers to you. This next one is from Jack Rutherford. We are a recent phase one company and we have just pitched out phase two earlier today. We're going directly to phase three. When we talked to you Air Force customers about phase three, they did not know how to respond when we mentioned sole source. Yeah. More P3 support? Yeah, so we've got that, you're right, and that's something. Uh, this, there's, there's, uh, this journey is also about educating the government, and so uh, we've got lots of options for people that want to go to phase three and how to do that. Uh, you, they can contract through that organization. They can also contract through, um, they can also contract through GSA. There, there's lots of phase three options. If you'd like, uh, there's actually a phase three guide uh, that's a part of our website, and it's got lots of things about phase three. Uh, but if, if, if your government customer doesn't understand phase three, uh, we need to have you connect them with uh, our office so that we can make sure they, they better understand that. Overall, trying to work on that to make people understand the power of the tool. Next one from Matthew Fox. How are you handling competition amongst cyber companies? Are you accepting multiple companies with similar tech? 
So uh, the, the, the numbers of technology, so the, the, the idea of, of once you are on a, on a particular technology track, uh, we are looking at you know multiple technologies that have uh, you know, the same you know, same feel, but but what we do try to look at is that there are there are slight variations in the in the system. Anytime you're doing research, it's always good to have you know there are always different approaches to solving that problem. So we don't want to only you know, only select one like any innovation organization. We want to create this large funnel. We want to bring as many different organizations that have relevant things that we're interested in and, and viable and relevant technology approaches. Uh, and we want to try to see how those pr progress over time. You, just because you win a phase one, we, we can't make any promises that you'll get a phase two. We can't make any promises you've got to follow on. We can't make any promises that you get a phase three. All that our organization uh, can provide is the opportunity uh, for those things to happen. And, and as a funding entity, we will, we will provide funding uh, as seed money uh, to match you up as best we can and to help you move through this process. This question is from Larry Williams. It's very direct to phase two open topics. According to the post on ESIP, it says cancel. Yeah, so that that's a that's a you're right. So that was it's it cancel's not the right word. We had some some wording that came out. One of them is the idea of being able to do multiple topics or multiple awards. We're trying to fix that. You know, we we like you are human. All we've done is tried to delay that. We're going to be putting that topic back out again. So again, I apologize if it's a several weeks or whatever from when you were, but nothing's gone wrong. You didn't lose your work. Just save it, put it into the new topic, and we'll, we'll go from there. I anticipate that every solicitation round going forward uh, will we'll have direct to phase twos. I, I don't want to tell you, again, I, rewinding, I love hearing these questions, but we used to only put out topics once a year. So, so we've got them going so often now that about every two or three months there'll be another round of topics and there's always going to be the ability to put your proposal into one of those. So, you know, the understood we did not cancel all, we, we had to cancel that solicitation, maybe reissuing that. And, and those folks are going to be able to put into, into that solicitation. We, 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 didn't, we didn't let you out hanging. Not going to happen. Yeah, so again, uh, you know, we, we, have, we have avenues within the Air Force uh, Cyber Program uh, to answer your questions. But you know, just as we're leaning forward here, our AFWorks partners are also a great front door if you have questions. If, if I feel supremely confident we've developed a, a strong partnership, if they can't answer the question, you know, within their community, then they'll they'll pass it down to us as well. So you, you have those both of those options. So the, the Air Force website and the AFWorks website, um, they are not two separate organizations. We are very much merged together. Um, I, I think that's something that you know there, there there may be some confusion, but we are one unified organization. The, the Air Force ventures going forward. Um, we are the, the the banner of innovation for the, the, the Air Force right now, and and uh, AFWorks is our uh, AFWorks is our front. Uh, they, they are the they are our interface to you, uh, and and the the cyber portfolio is the the engine behind power. You know that how the, how all these things will happen, and, and we're very excited about the propositions going forward. We're very excited about the successes we've had, and we're ready to correct the things that were kind of unintended consequences of the things we've tried out. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you for your involvement, um, and then looking forward to doing more things with you going uh, into the future.